Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here. And if you're a longtime listener, follower, watcher of mine, listen to my radio show, however you absorb my content, uh, you know that one of the things that is essentially and unfortunately near and dear to me is disinformation. We have a huge problem in society with disinformation. It's gone absolutely rampant, especially uh, you know as a result of things like elections. It's been supercharged by social media, but it's getting worse. And what I want to talk about is not just disinformation in general. I want to talk about the micro-targeting of disinformation, especially to minority communities, because I think it's an important one. Now, Scripps had a really good write-up on this. And so by virtue of that, I'm cribbing from them. But here's what's going on. And quite frankly, this is getting worse. And we have problems that we normally don't think about or talk about with disinformation that I think this article is bringing to light, and it's actually something that I talk about on occasion, but not as much as I should should be, uh, even though I talk about this, write about this. Heck, my next TED Talk that I'm working on is going to be on this. And so this is something that I think we really need to discuss, because new research shows exactly how communities of color, aka minority communities, are being targeted by this disinformation. Now, essentially, community members themselves who actually do vetting of information and don't just believe everything they read on platforms that allow disinformation to thrive like Facebook are actually the frontline defense that we as society have against disinformation that are targeting specifically Asian and Latino communities here in the United States and ahead of the 2024 election, it's even worse. And so by virtue of this, this is essentially what is known as purposeful manipulation and some of the false narratives that both of the communities have seen are things like, is a 2024 election even going to happen? You know, there's going to be this new pandemic or a new disease to be created in order to push mail-in ballots, which are fraudulent. Another one is Democrats are failing to secure the U.S. border specifically because they want to allow undocumented or illegal immigrants, to, however you say it, I'm not trying to be PC here or not, it just is what it is, but essentially that the Democrats are failing to secure the U.S. border due to un for, to allow specifically undocumented immigrants to vote for Democrats in the U.S. elections. This is all disinformation. And, and this is just a few of the false narratives that, again, both the Asian and Latino community is essentially grappling with in this election year. And as communities of color make up a significant voting block heading into December, Asian and Latino specifically make up the fastest growing group of eligible voters in 2024, according to Pew Research. They also face a similar issue, language barriers that often block them from trustworthy information. And this is something that I admit I have not spent enough time on, and I really should have as I'm talking about disinformation rather regularly. Quote, one in three Asian Americans is limited English proficient, which means they aren't able to use certain English language resources. That's according to Jenny Liu, a misinformation and disinformation policy manager at the Asian Americans Advancing Justice Organization. Quote, so when it comes to something like voting, uh, if they aren't able to go uh, to go to verified or reputable news sources and get that information, they will then, unfortunately, turn to alternative sources and media, end quote. And this is always where we're getting just basically caught up in misinformation and the more insidious disinformation. Now, false election-related narratives in Asian American communities typically start off in English before going through a quote-unquote misinformation factory, according to Liu. And I quote, usually a few days later... It then gets translated into Vietnamese, for example, and then it makes its way onto YouTube or someone will talk about it in uh, in a video and then it'll make its way onto a Facebook post, end quote. Now, false information also starts off as a familiar narrative or basically a story or rumor someone had heard before. That's according to Roberta Braga, who is the founder and executive of the Digital Democracy Institute of the Americas. And to quote her, one of them, for example, was that elites are conspiring with media and social media to hide the truth from us. From us, That's something called the global control narrative that we've seen spreading more and more. It usually has uh, to do with the United Nations or the World Economic Forum. It's sort of affiliated with QAnon, end quote. Now, if you're, again, a longtime listener follower, you know I've talked about QAnon. I've actually interviewed members of QAnon on my radio show. You can go see those on my YouTube channel or in SoundCloud. This is a huge problem. But to 
continue with Ms. Braga's words, and I quote again, the narratives opened up a window for people to accept other disinformation that they might see. That opened a window for people to believe, for example, that people are using vaccines to keep us down or putting microchips in them. And that is exactly what we're talking about. Now, this false claim creates an entryway to future disinformation about ballot fraud. Because if you're primed to believe disinformation and conspiracies are rampant, then everything can be a conspiracy. And that is the that is the terribleness that we have with this. We have an entire population believed, uh, are essentially primed to believe that anything out of the ordinary is suddenly some kind of dark narrative against them or society or everything else when sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. And to quote Leo again, so public health meets elections meets in the middle of this idea of fraud. Now, another false narrative uh, is essentially that undocumented immigrants are letting being let into the country so that they can vote, which I mentioned earlier, quote, Immigration is a big topic that we see ahead of any election, but now that's being weaponized to also intersect with this idea of voting. So, similar narratives were uncovered in the Latino communities by recent survey results from a DDIA uh, in partnership with YouGov poll. Now, these false claims included Democrats are encouraging non-citizen voting, and vaccines are a form of population control supported by elites and large corporations. And even when false information goes through a cycle of fact checking in English, the chances are that these translated versions, whether it's Vietnamese or Spanish or Cambodian or whatever the, the niche language is, they're not going to go through that same process on the Facebooks of the world. And Facebook is already terribly behind on just the English side of this, let alone everything else. And this is not the first time that the Facebooks of the world have been called out. There are actual war crimes happening in Facebook, or rather on Facebook, in languages like Arabic and Farsi because they don't have enough uh, basically Arabic or Farsi speakers to actually see these things happening in these groups where you are literally trading antiquities and illegal items in a war zone, which is a literal war crime. So Facebook, YouTube, and other major social media platforms are being called out for this fact checking, uh, basically for their insufficient responses for misinformation and disinformation. I have been ringing that bell for years and years and years and years, and I've been, been pulling my hair out for this, and it's not getting better because they're cutting their safety teams, and they've been doing that in the last couple of years to streamline efficiency and improve stock performance to the detriment of all of us. Now, these critiques come as content moderation tools, you know, essentially, like I said, are going away and by virtue of that, misinformation and disinformation campaigns are growing very quickly. And now you throw in generative AI and now they become more rampant and more ubiquitous. Quote unquote, information navigators seem to be the best way to combat this. As I mentioned right out of the gate, those in the community that are actually vetting this kind of data is essentially what we are talking about here to combat this because those information navigators, as they're being called, are essentially trusted messengers. And they sprang up from a pilot project led by researchers at the Information Futures Lab at Brown University's School of Public Health. And that project essentially revealed the, quote, dire need of quality information, end, uh, end quote, in uh, basically uh, communities like the one in South Florida that they were studying that happened to be Cubano. So this is something that I think is a huge, huge issue because it really does stem, stem from the foundation of trust. And by virtue of that, you're on Facebook, you see your trusted friends, you grew up with them, their family, their whatever, you like them, and all of a sudden they're telling you that, you know, the vaccines are, you know, basically population control or that, you know, they're letting these illegals come in and you've come into this country legally and you've jumped through all the hoops to get your citizenship, all that kind of stuff, like members of my family that I've had that have come here and they've spent a lot of time, you know, in energy and effort to basically become citizens of the United States you know, from wherever they immigrated from. And I've got literally, I literally have relatives on like four different continents. So, so this is one of those things that we're talking about because they see, or if they're being told, well, these people are just hopping the border and now they get a whole bunch of free stuff and can vote for president. That is going to piss you off, but it's not true. And so, so these are things that I think are a huge issue. And I'm fully expecting to get pushback just on this video by making these statements alone by people who say, Nick, you're absolutely wrong. They absolutely are letting these illegals vote when there's no evidence of that. And here we are. And so I'm just waiting for that impact. But this is where we're at right now. And it's getting worse. And because it's coming basically left and right 
in basically languages that are not English, which is what the vast majority of us speak here, they're hitting communities in a way that we are not foreseeing. And by virtue of that, it's fracturing communities between those that actually understand and can read English news sources versus those that have a hard time doing that. And that's something that needs to be combated. So I'm going to leave you with that. But essentially, this is your deep dive of the week. And quite frankly, it's something that is not going to go away. It's a huge problem. And we really honestly have to sort this out. So I'll leave you with that. And just good luck to us all and, you know, get accurate information. And in November, if you're an American citizen, please go vote because quite frankly, it's it's one of the most important rights we have. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please attempt to stay private. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.